Water sample failed a visual inspection. Lab test device of full system clean. Water sample failed. So that's telling us it's completely failed. Presence of corrosion detected, which is obvious. Lab test is advised by a full system clean. So that's what we're doing. We are doing full system clean on it. A, because we were gonna do a full system clean anyway, but the AD Pro check is also telling us if we didn't realize that is not good at all. So it's failed, but I've just noticed so if we drain the heat in or when we drain the heat in, it wouldn't have filled back up. Got a, a magna clean, a normal magna clean unit. Got a magna clean atom. Or we can come off here and use a spiral tech. But you can see massively that you've got a cold spot along the bottom of that rad. I've already got the spiral tech flushing adapter that goes neatly onto there. So let me just show you. We have got quite a good result actually. Look at that. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. Tonight's video is, as you've probably seen, a quite a long one. So I'm not going to rub it on too much in here. We're doing a full system flush on a house. Also, a brief check over. The, the customers recently purchased the house and wanted a complete once over of their plumbing, uh, the waste, the heating system. So I visually look over everywhere, test everything, a few little things um, that need replacing, as you'll see. Uh, then we move on to a complete system flush, run the AD Pro check first and you'll see just how dirty the system is to the point of it completely failing a test, which is never good. Then we move on to flushing it through and at the end you'll see the amount of gunk and sludge and iron oxide that we take out of the system. It's probably one of the worst ones I've seen, to be honest, for a very long time. So, enough of that, let's get on with it because it's probably tipping over 40 odd minutes now. As always, some people say to me, can you do longer videos? Some people like the shorter ones. So this week, we've not had a massively long one for a while. So I hope you all enjoy it. Drop me a comment, hit the subscribe button. We should be there or thereabouts for the 18,000 now, which as always, appreciate every single person that's subscribed and drops a comment and drops a like. But we have had a few dickhead comments lately. Um, yeah, they seem to be coming out the woodwork a little bit. But anyway, I'll just either kill him with kindness or just delete him anyway. So anyway, let's get on with it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. So today's video is something that I do do for customers now and again. Not a, not a great deal, but uh, this customer, for instance, I've done work on their previous house. They've, but they've moved into this house around a month ago and they wanted a couple of things. They wanted a complete system flush on the radiators. I think it's a... 12 rad system this house uh, which is fine we can come and do that obviously they want to make sure the system's good to go for the winter and before they bought the house the boiler was actually serviced so that's not an issue they're just unsure of the heating system and what it's like so we will run that up get the thermal imaging on it make sure everything's all right or if it's not all right we know which rads to concentrate on but completely flush the system also the system doesn't have a filter on the uh, return i.e. a magnet clean or a spirotech filter or whatnot so what is going to be quite tricky on this one the pipe on the right i think is the return but we haven't got much room to get a filter in there and now i'm either going to do it a couple of elbows off and, and, and sight it here or possibly in line or what i've got a few options i've got the spirotech I think it's the MBC one. I've got a Magna Clean Atom, which is the small one. And I've also got a normal Magna Clean unit, but we'll give that a go, we'll try that. But what I'm predominantly here for to start with is they want a complete check over of the plumbing and the heating system. I say the boiler's been serviced prior to and getting the house a few months ago. So it's things like, we'll start here for instance, I've got my little notepad so I can go around and make a note of each sort of appliance so in here i will get the cam uh, i will get the light out in a minute and do it properly but incoming main comes in here so we'll make sure all this works make sure the valves turn on and off if they don't make a note of it make sure everything's running right make sure the taps aren't leaking etc etc you've got another sink in there and then you'd move into sort of like the downstairs toilet make sure the sinks all right make sure the toilets are right flushing all right and just go around every single sort of outlet and, and, light off. 
and just go around every single outlet, plumbing outlet, shower, basin, toilet, and make sure everything's all right. If it's not, make a note of it, um, and just make sure the heating runs up, make sure the hot water runs up, check the tank in the roof. So we'll go around and we'll make a note of it all. So I've just been finished downstairs. That sink in the utility is absolutely fine. The main one is fine. There's a couple of little bits of, um, you know, where water's leaked on a pipe. So I've rubbed that off and sanded that down and got some wire wool on it, cleaned that up. Downstairs cloak room's absolutely fine. Then what I've done, I've moved upstairs into the bathroom. So just check the shower, make sure it's going through the hot and cold on the thermostat, absolutely fine. Heads are fine. Check the tap. With this toilet, the customer was saying to me they were struggling to flush the toilet. So these pneumatic buttons can be a right pain. So I've took the panel off this, I've took the front off to just show you. If we just press that in, it doesn't flush completely. I'll do it again and show you internally here. It doesn't hold up as it should do. So what I'll do is just swap this off, pull the hoses off, connect them to my little test button that I keep in the van. And if we do the same again, just press the bottom one, just to make sure it is the button and not the uh, mechanism. Give that a press in, get a full flush. After it's completely flushed it as opposed to that button that was just flapping up and down and not even flushing the toilet so we know the button's the issue so we can get a replacement button for there um, I think I'm getting off the shelf at plumb base the, the Dudley ones but yeah I always keep that one as just a test one in the van um, then I know exactly that that's the issue and just to show you I reconnected the original one press that so you just need lift the diaphragm out apart from if you push it a good couple of times to sort of build it up so yeah you know the buttons the issue on that one and then we've got the ensuite testing the toilet toilet's fine basin's fine just missing the top of the little push button waste i think i've got a spare one in the van i'll check if so i'll pop it on shower shower's working fine I think the customer does want this changing at some point just for a, a newer looking one or a better looking one but as a rule that is working fine shower screen's fine just a you know a little bit old as they are all that seems fine in there so as a quick look over the plumbing system we've yet to get up into the roof which I'm going to do shortly the patches over there so I'll go and get my ladders out of the van we'll get up into the roof and then that's the sort of the hot and cold plumbing side all well and good and then we can turn on to the heating side we'll turn the heating on run it all up um i think i've already said about the missing thermostatic heads there's probably eight or nine that are missing so i'll go around make a note of that see if i can get some replacement ones from plum base pop them on and then i've got full control over each radiator in the heating system so let's have a look up at the tanks in the room <laughs> That's nice and neat. It's right by the entrance out. Overflow is running out, that's fine. Tanks coming in. Feed coming in nice and lagged. Yeah. Let's just make sure. There we go. <laughs> So this is the tank to feed the central eating. And I've just come up to check it. Um, but I've just noticed that. So if we drain the heat in or when we drain the heat in, it wouldn't have filled back up because the diaphragm inside is stuck. So what I'll do is just get another ball valve to replace that because for the sake of a couple of quid we'll get that swapped out so that's all the plumbing side of things checked over looked over we know we've got a couple of little issues we're going to sort the button out on the toilet and the ball valve up in the roof so we now turn on to the heating now when they bought the house 
The board has been serviced, so that's not a problem. It's part of the stipulation of them buying the house. So I've had a quick look round. I haven't fired it up yet, but what I have noticed is there's seven radiators, or at least six radiators without the thermostatic rad valves. Now this one was next to a radiator in the lounge, I think it was, and I wondered why it was just sat on the floor. Um, and it turns out, if you look in here, see this pin here, that's all the way out. Now, if you turn the rad valve off, which I try and do one-handed, turn it off, it's absolutely solid. So that would be the off position. So that would be, for instance, with that pin all the way out, like so, with the valve in off, it would, see a little plunger on top of the valve, that would be in the push down position. So the valve would be off, the rad would be off. You open it up, like so, and that pin should retract back into the valve, therefore making that pin open up and the rad come on. So that is knackered, the springs or whatever it is that's inside there, the liquid, gubbins, whatever it is, is obviously knackered, springs too loose, springs let go. So that shows us that that valve is knackered. So all together we need seven replacement TRV heads. Now I've been round and checked all the pins on the rads move up and down, so that's fine. So we know that the valves are working, that the valves are going up and down, so we know we can shut the valves on and off, but we need those heads to replace them. And to give us complete control over the heating system, make it more efficient, save you money, and especially at this time with energy prices going through the roof, that is something that you need to do, can save you a hell of a lot of money on your energy bills. We'll run this heating up, get the thermal imaging camera on it, go and check each rad, make sure each rad is circulating through. I know because we're gonna be flushing it, there may be cold spots in them. Uh, but yeah, the customer just wanted a, a, an overhaul of the heating system as well. But what we're gonna to struggle to do is, now this is the, the sort of the tricky bit of this job. Now, this is the return on this boiler. Um, I've got a few options. I've got a, a magna clean, a normal magna clean unit. I've got a magna clean atom that could possibly sit in there, but haven't then got the attachments to connect it into a magna cleanse unit to flush the system. Or we can come off here and use a spiro tech, but we sort of govern the room here. So worst case scenario, we may have to remove this cupboard. This is gonna be the, the trickiest bit of this job really, but we need that filter on there just to keep things nice and clean when we've finished doing the flush. So fire the heating up and we'll go around with thermal imaging and just see what the rads are doing. So we fired the heating up and I'm just going round with the thermal imaging, just checking what the rads are doing prior to doing anything on the system. Obviously here's another one that, let's have a look. Oh yeah, see this one, it's only been on five minutes or so, but you can see massively that you've got a cold spot along the bottom of that rad, really warm along the top. So along the top, at the minute, what are we, 42, 43 degrees, and along the bottom, 20 degrees. There's another one in here. Yeah, same again at the bottom, you've got the cold spot, as you can see in the blue. Let's pop upstairs and just have a look and see what these rads up here do. Yeah, that rad's pretty much equal heat. And that one, the upstairs one seemed to be, to be honest. Yeah. Obviously, that they will all get flushed as well. As I was saying, we want to put a filter onto this, um, onto this boiler, onto the return, which is this one on the right. Now, I'm doing an AD um, power cleanse flush on the system, which is what I always do. I personally like it. I know there are other ones out there that you can use. So what I usually do is fit MagnaClean. This is the MagnaClean Micro. I've looked at this various different ways. So I could, I mean, shout out to Dave at Plumbase. He's let me have two of these magnet cleanse units to offer up to try. So if we're gonna put this one in, obviously that one's got to sit vertically. So we'd have to come off the top with an elbow, across, down, into this, then out the bottom of it, back up, thumb vent, 
and then into there. So that was, you know, an option to which they've also got the MagnaClean Atom, which could have possibly have sat in there like so, could have come off the original fittings and onto that, but it's just a bit tight and I've looked everywhere for a fitting that will go onto that and then connect onto my um, MagnaCleanse unit because usually it connects on to the bits out of the normal one, you know the, the two little prongs that come out of there, they usually connect on there. I can't find one that will connect onto the front of that. So that sort of put me off that one. I'm sure there is a fitting. I'm sure someone will come at me in the comments saying, yeah, there is a fitting. So I sort of ruled that one out. Then I remember Dave at Spirotech is always harping on about the MCB one or the MBC one, one of the two, I can't remember which way around it is. But I spoke to Dave, dropped Dave a message. The good thing with Dave Goodyear, who works for Spirotech is He's at the end of the phone whenever you need him. So, dropped him a message saying, basically, is it all right for me to fit it there in line? Or, like, is it okay for me to fit it there horizontal? I can come off the top of there straight into the side. Let's offer it up like that. I can come straight off the top of there, into the side of there, out the other side, basically loop wrap around the back of it, and then straight into that fit in there. And also, I've already got the Spirotech flushing adapter that goes... I can't do this one handed, hang on. That goes. If I can undo it. Neatly onto there. So that can sit there, can be flushed and then replaced. So that can sit there with the adapter on. I can flush the system through as I normally do. And then afterwards I can switch it back and refit that. So we're gonna go Spirotech for the inline filter. System's running up now. I'm gonna leave it five or 10 more minutes, go around with the thermal imaging, check everywhere is okay. And then begin to drop the system out and then cut this Spirotech filter in to the return. Right, so I've just had to swing out, grab some valves from Plumbase, popped in to see if they had any replacement heads. They haven't, so we're gonna have to source them from somewhere else. But I've been up there, isolated the header tank. I've also picked up a valve, uh, a ball valve to change in there when we go to fill it back up. But for now, we're gonna drain it down and get the Spirotech filter fitted in there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come off here with an elbow and I'm gonna put a full bore, if you can see it, full bore 22 mil isolation valve there, then the filter, then off the filter and put another isolation valve at the bottom going into the boiler, just so that we can isolate where that valve is once we're done because, you know, like a, a MagnaClean has the two isolation valves on it, these Spirotech ones don't, so it would mean draining the system down again to remove that adapter and put that filter on. So we can just shut the two valves off and do that. So what I've done, I'll just whip this rad off here. And you can see, that's the water, the color of the water, just out of this rad. So we're gonna get the system drained down. Also what we'll do is get the AD Pro check out, fill it up, do a pre-test. So completely test the system as it is now. And then we'll do it after. And obviously that can be sent over to the customer afterwards. So. Let's get the system drained down and get that filter cut in. Draining that system has been a right pain in the ass. I've had it emptied here. Obviously got all the vents upstairs open. Tried to open this up, but it's actually seized solid, so it won't move at all. So I didn't want to try and disturb it too much. So I cracked the nut here, add the Aquavac out on it. And now, give or take, we are drain down. Looks like I'm going to be back here tomorrow because today is just swallowed up time on this really. Checking everywhere this morning which wasn't too bad but uh, draining the system down has been a bit of a pain. So after a lot of messing around trying to get this filter in it's in. Now before you see it 
there's only one way it can go in. It doesn't look overly pretty, but it's functional and it fits and we haven't had to remove the unit and no other filter would fit in. So, that's what we're dealing with. Um, excuse the soldering, but I'm one of these people, I want it to not leak. I don't want it to, it's gotta look half decent, but I don't want, you know, people put the tiniest little bit of solder in. Me personally, I prefer it to not leak. So, we've got the Spirotech unit on there. We've got two, their lever valves, but I've took the levers off so we can turn it on and off there um, to be able to isolate this, as I said, so that when we take the front of it off, like so ready for the adapter plate to go on and then we can connect it to the magma screen unit like so then the adapter plate if i can find it here it is will sit like that and then we can connect the magma clean onto it so yeah so that's finally in so what i'm going to do is shut these off which i have done and go and refill the heating system and then run it up we're late on in the day, so what I'm going to do is leave this connected to the system overnight. The customer's away for a week, uh, we've got full access to the house, so which is handy. So I'm going to connect the MagnaCleanse unit up to it and leave it on overnight with the cleaner in it. And then tomorrow we can get here first thing and start the flushing process and get it all cleaned out as it should be. But today has been a bit of a head scratcher really for, for getting this sorted and draining the system, how long it took and then farting around with this, so yeah. Right, let's get this done, let's get it back, filled back up, ready for tomorrow. So, now we've got the MagnaCleanse connected into the Spirotech adapter. We've had to put a couple of little fittings on there, a couple of 22 mil bits of pipe, and then down onto the MagnaCleanse adapter. So that is ready, I've still got it turned off up there, but it's ready to fill up, but I just wanted to show you, if I just, because I've turned the water back on now, if I just open up that, and this is the colour of the water after having the water drained out of it and back into it so yeah you can see it's going down into this drain it is really rusty brown absolutely mean we'll just take a little sample of that water just so we can run it through the ad project um, and then we will get it connected just pop the lid off that and then we shall get all that turned on and begin getting it run through the magnet lens. But I just wanted to grab a bit of this. Ah, nice. There you go. It is a very nasty brown colour. So we'll put that in there. We'll get this on running through the magnet lens and begin the first stage of flushing this heating system through. And what I also want to do, before we get too carried away, I bought the Aquavac up, just up into the roof, because I want to suck a lot of that sludge out of the bottom of this header tank before it gets dragged into the system too much. There you go, you can see I've took a majority, well, I've took all of that dirty water out. What I'll do before we refill this up is give it a good wipe down inside, get rid of all that crap off the side walls so this header tank is nice and clean, ready for the system to be flushed through. We're getting somewhere now. I'll be glad when today is over. I've turned it on, I've just finished upstairs wiping the tank out. I've turned it on now here, so we're live here, we're live through these pipes here. Dirt, as you can see, is sitting in this pipe work. So this basically is the filter the inline filter we're just remotely doing it here now um, so before i add the mp3 into here that's going to sit in the system overnight i just want to show you the magnets that's that one i always like to do a little magnet check to see what sort of crap i'm going to get out so as you can see these are completely clear hopefully at the end of uh, at the end of play once we finish doing the flush they will be covered in black iron oxide because they're just going to grab all the iron oxide from in the system because everything on the heating system is going to be going through this filter so i've put the lid back on it let's take it off and add in if i can open it the mc3 inhibitor you can use various other inhibitors and i have used other inhibitors and cleaners but i always find 
the AD stuff to be the best one. Some people don't do a chemical clean, some people do a mains flush clean, some people do a power flush clean. For me, I've been doing a few of these uh, over the years, I'm really rating them, I think it works well. So, put the cleaning solution into there. As I say, they're not turned on yet with these lever valves. As soon as I open them up, then it'll begin circulating around the system. Put that on, and I'll open up <coughs> these two valves, and you'll see the amount of crap that's going to go around the system. There you go, look. Open this one up. So that is everything going through these two magnets. Let's just vent these two, get some air out of them. That is that all completely full now. It's on up there, on down there. Let's go and turn the heating on and begin circulating the whole system through that magnet lens. So as you can see, it's all beginning to shift round. I don't know if you can pick it up, but these hoses are completely black or brown or whatever colour you want to call them. Um, but the thermal imaging is picking up that the heat is beginning to go through these magnets. And uh, when the boiler fires up, it will start heating up the system. We'll run it up, leave the heating on sporadically throughout the night. As I said, the customer's not here, so we can switch it on and off for a couple, an hour, off, hour, off. Um, and then we can come back in the morning and see what's occurring. So yeah, today has been a bit of a stressful one to be fair. With the fitting of that valve, with various other things, I also noticed on the van, my van's got a bit of a slow puncture, so I've got to try and sort that out. So it's the following day, we're back at this house. We've had uh, the Magna Cleanse unit running all night through the system. And what I did, as I said before, because the customer is away, I set the programmer to come on at like hour intervals for an hour and a half during the night. So it's been shifting everything around. We've come back, the hoses are so much cleaner. Um, so I'm just running it up again now. I've got the hose connector, I've whipped this rad off, got the hose connected onto here so I can dump the water out. But at the moment it's still running through there. I've just added a little bit more cleaner inside the Magnacan's pots. Just to see if there's any slight little bits of dirt and debris left in it. I've run it up, I've been round, as soon as you walk into this room, it is red hot. I say, I've been round with the, the camera. I think these ones yesterday were quite struggling at the bottom. So I've been round, agitated the bottom of them. And these are coming through now, absolutely perfectly. They all are, to be fair. All the rads, all the rads in this house now, just after having the cleanser through last night. Um, yeah, as you can see. They're all absolutely spot on. We'll leave it running for another hour or so, and then we'll dump the water out of it, fill the system back up, go around shutting off each of the rads, and hopefully by that time, the replacement valves will have turned up, the replacement TRV valves, because as I said, um, a few of the rads are missing. Thermostatic rad valves, so we've ordered those. Hopefully they will come, because then we can begin shutting the rads down on the system with the TRVs. If they haven't come but in an hour or so, I'll use lock shields to go around, shut every single rad off in the house, bar for one, flush the system through that one, turn that one off, turn another one on, flush the system. So they're literally flushing each individual radiator on the system. So everything is going through that Magna Cleanse unit. But yeah, no, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with it as we stand at the minute. So we'll continue dumping a little bit of water out. I'm going to switch from the rad to the actual drain off on the hose of the Magna Cleanse system, so that will clean the primaries through as well. Um, but they've done a pretty good job to be fair. So yeah, pretty pleased this morning. So while we're here, I'll run you through this AD Project. So, right, so let's load up Project, new water test, United Kingdom postcode here, just so that the customer details aren't everywhere. Number. Right, so we have a none of the above, it's not a service, not a retest, none of the above, next. Right, so we have got a system, next, uh, job reference, border serial number, no. Next, uh, is the filter, so this is 
before we done it. This is the first check I'm going to do on the system. Um, so is there at that time the filter wasn't fitted, so it's no. Next, um, take a sample of water. Yeah, that's what we've got here. Please take place against the power grab. I'm going to take a photo. This is you take a photo just so you can compare it. So we'll do that. So that's the photo I've got of it. It doesn't look the nicest colour water at all. So select the colour closest to the sample taken. I would say dark brown or black. Uploading results. Water sample failed. A visual inspection. Lab test device or full system clean. So water sample failed. So that's telling us it's completely failed. So water sample failed, visual inspection, presence of corrosion detected, which is obvious. Lab test is advised or a full system clean. So that's what we're doing. We are doing a full system clean on it. A, because we were gonna do a full system clean anyway, but the AD Pro check is also telling us if we didn't realize that is not good at all. So it's failed. So I'll email those results to myself. And then when we finish doing the system flush, We'll run that through again and I'll put the AED Pro check back into the phone and show you exactly how it works and what the results are. But this is just good for the customer because it's got email results. I don't need to email the results at the moment because everything, every system that you check is stored on the AED main database which you can access through your login IDs. So yeah, it's just a complete sort of process of logging what, exactly what we're doing. And then next time we test it, it won't be that, it'll be clear, and uh, it'll have an inhibitor in it. It'll have been cleaned with MC3, completely flushed through, and then MC1 inhibitor popped back in it. But let's continue now, getting this flushed out. So we're a few hours later now since doing the initial test on it or running the, the pro check on it, and I've been waiting for the valves to arrive. They haven't arrived, so what I'm gonna do, as I said before, is just go around each rad and shut them off where I can't on a thermostatic valve. I will use just the lock shield the other side, like so, and then just go around flushing each individual rad. I'm not gonna take you around showing you all that. It's just basically shutting all the rads off, opening one up, one after the other, and keeping them completely flushed and flushing the system through at the same time. So we'll get that done, and then that means after that point, we can then disconnect the magna cleanse unit, get the filter back on the top there, and then we can just do the final flush through this rad and then pop the inhibitor in, run it up for an hour, get the inhibitor all around the system and then do a final pro check test just to make sure the system is completely clean, corrosion free, pH levels are perfect. Uh, and that is basically what we want doing. I'll, I'll also go around with the thermal imaging just to make sure, but even now at this stage, they are all perfect and as I'd hope they would be. So let's get this flush done. Right, so we've now got the Spirotech filter fitted onto the system, so that can stay there. We're just finishing flushing it off, but I have disconnected the Magna Cleanse unit and I've had a quick sneak peek inside to see what we've caught. So, let me just show you. I'm quite impressed with this one, to be fair. So this was the first pot that it will go into and this is the second part so it goes in the bottom up through that cylinder there with the magnet inside back down that side and then obviously up that side as well and then out and carries on into the heat system so do this one as well. what we've got from this heating system with um 11 radiators a couple of towel rails boiler clean the tank out in the roof and out of these magnets we have got quite a good result actually look at that so that's a perfect little way to show you with the white behind but yeah look at that that is all iron oxide sludge and crap that we've taken out of the system that's just the width of the clean magnet and we've got all that it's quite bulbousy looking by the way i think that is due to the way it spins around inside so that's the first part and then that's the second pot. So yeah, we've taken all of that out of the system. So that would sit into the system usually, get into your pumps, your valves, your thermostats, bottom of your radiator sludging up, you know, by agitating the rads and shutting each rad off like we have done, it's pushed all of that crap out of the system and onto our magnets and caught it there. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. 
So let's get back in now, finish flushing through, get the inhibitor in, do a final pro check on it, and we're all good. I'm pretty pleased with the results from that Magna Cleanse. We took a lot of crap and sludge and dirt out of this system. Just having it tidy up now, boiler's all done, filter's all on. I have to put some stickers on the front for obviously my company and the dates when the cleanse and flush was done. I've just taken a little sample of water. So I've just run through now exactly the results of this. So let's just fire up a retest. Uh, where are we? Uh, AD Project, new test, same postcode obviously. Right, so here we are, um, retest, here we go. So we'll pop the retest, next, and it's system, next, job reference was 02, we'll use on this one. We don't need the boiler serial number. Is there a filter? Yes, we've now got a filter installed. Take a sample of the water which we've got here. Take a picture in front of a plain background, which I would do like this. Perfect. And that just goes onto the records at the end. So continue. Uh, does the closest water sample, we're going to go clear with that one. Clear. Uh, right. Take a. Right. So. Dip a test strip into the water for three seconds and remove. So we'll pop that in. One, two, three, and remove. And we'll just let it dry. And just let the strip dry out. Gives you a little countdown on there. But yeah, these tests I just find are really good. Um, there's various different ones on the market. I'll use the I'll use the AD Magna Cleanse, and I use the AD um, Magna Clean filters, so it makes sense to just use the AD Pro Check as well. And then what they're going to ask us to do next is pop it on there. Once it's dry for 60 seconds, then you just have to use your phone to take a couple of pictures of it. Right, press the test card on the strip. Press continue and then what it do you have to line it up like so. If we can move it down into the sunlight maybe. Right, here we go. Yeah, one, two, three. So as you can see straight away we've come back inhibitor pass, corrosion pass, pH levels pass. Inhibitor level, okay. System is protected, no further action required. Corrosion level is low, no further action required. pH level, okay, no further action required. Add note. So I'm going to put onto this notes, complete flush. Flush removing a huge amount of sludge and I... Uh, Side, etc. Because that just goes onto the the system then. Upload in. Fail to erode Complete test. Just got no signal here. Yeah, that's working now. Test complete. Done. So there we go. That's the AD Pro check done. So that's it. This system is completely ready to go now. I've checked over everything. We've just got to wait for the thermostatic valve to arrive, which should be anytime now i will shoot off pick them up come back fit them on and then this system is completely flushed clean ready efficient and going to save the customer a fair few quarter nice heating bills and repair bills uh, and all stuff like that so and it's always handy to have a system flush done especially if this is a, a new house for them so hope you've enjoyed this if you have hit the subscribe button hit the like button drop me a comment below we're nearly i think as i'm filming this we may have just clicked 18,000, so I appreciate every single one of you that has subscribed to the channel. Plenty more to come, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you later.